Welcome, Daz Studio enthusiasts. This is Not From This World. Welcome to my tutorial series. This week, I'd like to talk a little bit about hair and posing hair, using D-Force with hair, and talking about is it worth trying to convert non-D-Force hair into D-Force compatible. And so the first thing I want to talk about is that hair is one of the biggest challenges in posing in Daz Studio. Posing in general is what takes most of our time when we are trying to set up a scene. And the hair especially can be quite a challenge. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, when I'm setting up a scene, I don't pose hair as detailed as I probably could. And the reason why is it's simply a pain in the butt. Um, if our character is upright or close to upright, I don't really see any need in doing a lot of hair posing. What becomes a challenge is when our character is laying down or upside down or even leaning forward quite a bit or back quite a bit. If we leave the hair in its default poses when we have the character in those positions, it becomes very unrealistic. And so that's when posing hair becomes important. Now, to start off with, I've got my Milica character kind of leaning over, and I want to show you how we can convert this hair into D-Force, and then talk about, is it really necessary? This is actually one of the types of hair that I really like for my avatar character, Milica. It is the Linda ponytail hair for uh, Genesis 8 females. And what's kind of nice about it is it has some posable parts. And to be honest with you, this is kind of how I pose the hair when I'm using this specific prop. So, for example, I can click on the ponytail itself. As you can see here in my Scene tab, it's selected. And then once I select it, I can go to my Parameters tab, and then I can use the uh, dials to move it. And uh, this is how I often will pose my character. You know, it's it looks like it's going into her body, so I'll just move it out, give it kind of a, a nice position that looks as natural as possible, and then I will render that way. I can also do that with the bangs. So see, I can adjust the bangs. And, you know, for the most part, this works really well and I can adjust things and get the hair relatively quickly in the position that I like and so often this is how I will pose hair now there are times when we may want a better pose for the hair now you can turn non-D-Force hair into D-Force. And this involves kind of the same procedure that we would use if we are going to turn anything into D-Force. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our hair. So it's the Linda ponytail hair for Genesis 8. I'm gonna come up to edit Go down to Object, go to Geometry, 
And just like we've done with uh, primitives or other uh, props, we're just going to say add deforce modifier dynamic surface. And I'm going to select that. Now with our ponytail uh, selected, you can see now we have a simulation tab. And the simulation tab says that our hair is now a dynamic surface. Now it's really important to understand that we can't just simulate the hair now. It, it's not going to work. So what we have to do is we have to add a weight map to the hair. So uh, kind of like in one of my uh, recent tutorials, the weight mapping will cause some of the hair to be frozen in place while other parts of the hair will move. Now in order to do this I'm going to hide my character. I'm going to hide Milica. I'm going to actually hide her clothes as well. And so all we're going to be looking at is the hair itself. And with the hair selected in my scene tab, I'm going to go to uh, create and then I'm going to go down to where it says new deforce modifier weight node and we're going to do this we're just going to select it you can name it if you want to but now we have a deforce modifier with that deforce modifier weight node selected in the scene tab I'm going to come up to tools come down to my node weight map brush click on it and then go to my tool settings now remember my tool settings are right here but if yours is not a tab just go to windows panes and then find your tool settings right there now with your tool settings just come down here where it says deforce simulation influence weights and say add map now remember this turns everything red. Red means that it's going to move due to deforce. And so what we have to do is we want to freeze the scalp, the part of the hair that is attached to the head. And we, what we want is we want, in this case, our ponytail to move and then perhaps the bangs. It would be nice to see these bangs move a little bit. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select my hair. I'm gonna get my ponytail and I wanna move it so that it's away from the rest of the, the hair. All right, then I'm going to go back into our weight node and we'll select that modifier. And now what I want to do is I want to get rid of the deforce on the scalp portion. So we're going to have to be careful, but remember all I have to do is make sure my paintbrush is selected within the tool settings. I'm going to hit the alt key and I'm going to just delete or freeze those areas. Now I want to get all of this make it so I'm freezing it. Remember I'm hitting Alt. I'm pressing down the Alt button. Now this is kind of time consuming and you have to be patient. Now one of the big mistakes that people make is they only will do this to the outside we're going to see that the inside is deforce enabled. 
And so that's why I can't get rid of some of that red that you're seeing. It's because it's actually on the inside of the hair. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to orient it so that the inside can be changed as well. Now when you think about this, this is one of the reasons why you, you've got to weigh your options. Is this worth it? Because this is very time consuming. And this is often why I don't use deforce and non-deforce hair. So now I'm getting the inside, see? Getting all that inside frozen. Now one thing I've noticed that really is frustrating is it's now frozen. I don't mean the deforce is frozen. I mean I can't change it. So what's cool is if I go into that weight node and I just delete it and then I go back up to my hair and I create it again, it won't reset everything. It'll actually just keep it the way it was and then my little target's back. I don't know why Daz does that, but it's super annoying but it will freeze on you a little bit. So if that happens, just delete that weight node, open it back up, create a new one, and then your target will be back so you can keep working. Um, I wish I had an explanation for that. Daz is a weird program sometimes. It has, it has its little glitches, that's for sure. So we just have to deal with that. Okay, honestly that took me about 20 minutes and I still am not completely satisfied with it. Okay, so now I've got this kind of set up the way that I want it. I'm going to pop uh, Milica back in. Let's put her clothes back on first so we keep YouTube happy. I'm going to put her back in. Okay, so now we have everything set up, but here's the challenge. And what I think is funny is other tutorial videos don't show you actually simulating the hair. Now one of our problems, or I would think the biggest problem, is that our hair is missing collision. So if I select the ponytail hair here, I can go down to simulation and we have no collision. If I uh, select the parameters tab, select our ponytail, type in collision, I don't get anything. And so what I've noticed happens is that the hair, as it simulates, it'll just cut through our girl instead of laying on top like it should with deforce. Now, let me show you an example of this. I'm gonna hide that hair. Let's select Milica, and let's go to a deforce hair. Um, this is a deforce hair. I'm gonna select it. So if I go to the deforce hair, and I go to parameters, select it, and type in collision. It has a collision item, which is Milica. So when I run the deforce simulation, the hair is going to go over Milica. It's gonna collide with Milica. It's gonna uh, look natural. Now, our non-deforce hair that we turned into deforce 
does not have that. Now, if you know how to create it, you got to tell me because it would make life so much easier, but we don't have it. So what do we do? Well, that's where we have to get creative. I'm going to delete that D force. Let's turn back on our ponytail. What we have to do is we're going to have to simulate it and watch the simulation and stop it where we want the hair to be. Because if we run the simulation to 100%, we're going to get some pretty wacky results. That hair is going to cut through the body and it's going to look terrible. So we have to play around a little bit. Now the first thing is, I kind of already have this set up, but we're going to go to simulation settings and instead of having it as current frame, we're going to change that to animated timeline play range. And then, I have it already selected, but if you go down here to timeline and you hit the timeline, we're going to create a timeline. And the timeline is pretty cool because if you get some funky things happening, you can stop your simulation and then use the timeline to figure out where you want the hair to be for the scene. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select uh, four views. And I kind of have these four views selected for a reason so that we can watch what the hair is doing. All right, I'm going to go to a right view here. And what we're going to do is we're going to run the simulation and we're going to just watch the hair and see what it does so that we can change it or stop it whenever we get to the point where we like it. All right, now I haven't seen any other tutorials that do this. They set it all up with your weight mapping. They make it look really good and then they're like, well, it's gonna take too long to simulate it so I won't do that. And you don't see all the problems with this. So let's do a simulation. Now with the timeline, you're going to see the timeline move as we simulate. And we can watch all of these different viewpoints or viewports to see what the hair is doing. See how it's cutting through? You can see it right here. It's going into the girl, which is extraordinarily annoying, at least to me. You'd think with D-Force it's going to fall around her, not through her. Another really cool thing is we can stop this anytime we want. We do not have to let it go to 100%. So I can hit cancel anytime. So if it's not working or we're not happy with the results, we can always cancel it. Okay, we got through the entire simulation. And what's really cool is, I don't know what I would like, but I can take this timeline, I can grab it, see I'm right down here at 30, and I can go back to a position that I like. Now honestly, like if I look at her bangs, her bangs are doing some weird stuff. But right about here at 18, her bangs look pretty good. So see, I can, I can move my timeline to where I like it. All right, now another cool thing is I can select that ponytail and I can move it so I can move it into a 
position where it's not intersecting her neck, hopefully. All right, something like that. I'm gonna get out of this, go back to a single view. Okay, so I have Milika into a scene now, just a simple bedroom scene. Looks like she's kind of holding on to a railing or a bed. And let's, uh, let's give her a render. Let's see how this worked. Okay, so you can see our render. I also rendered another picture uh, without any deforce with the same hair. And so I'm gonna kind of put them side to side so here. You can see the two renders. This render was made without any deforce with the hair. And I like it better, honestly. This is a deforce. You can see her uh, ponytail went almost behind her head. You can see a little bit of it here. And there is a little change in the bangs. But to be honest with you, I don't know if I would really use D-Force on a non-D-Force hair item. I think if you have them in, a, in an extreme pose, it may be very beneficial. But, you know, for just a, um, just a typical render, I think I would just move the different parts of the hair and render it up and you can get some really good results. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. I feel like I didn't really answer questions that I've had about non d force hair conversion, but uh, please hit the like button, comment, and if you haven't, please subscribe and I will see you next week. Have a wonderful day.